You took a company in IBM that had been very successful, really iconic, but had fallen in somewhat hard times and brought it back. And there are other companies today that we can look across the, the spectrum and see where a company has been very, very successful, has done well, has a good brand, but the business has changed around it. The environment has changed. How do you do it? How did you do it? How did you rethink what IBM was? Well, <clears throat> David, I think, I think the most important thing about turning around a successful company is to understand how complex you have, how complex the processes inside the company are. Uh, successful companies suffer from what I call success syndrome. They, they're successful, so what do they do? They figure out inside what made us great. So they start incorporating all these processes of how to sell, how to build, how to evaluate, how to train. And then all of a sudden the world changes and they see the change in the world, but they don't know how to change the company. So. Well, why did four CEOs not turn around AT&T and it had to be sold to one of its former child? Why did three CEOs not turn around uh, uh, Eastman Kodak? Did they not see digital photography? They invented it. And at AT&T, do you think they didn't see mobile? They invented it. Why did four C CEOs not turn around Sears Roebuck? Didn't they see that little company that Mr. <laughs> Sam was creating a few hundred miles away? No. What happens is CEOs say, oh, we have to change. There's where we're going. And they point somewhere else, and nobody turns and follows them. Why? Because they don't understand that every single process in the company, like compensation, like measurement, like organization, like information, has all been built to gear against the old strategy. And you have to go in and change every one of those processes if you're going to get the company to turn somewhere else. And somebody once said, process transformation in a company is like setting your hair on fire and putting it out with a hammer. I mean, it is, it is not easy to change processes in a company, particularly a successful company where there's built up this belief that we know how to do it. Well, I, I've seen this from inside. I mean, Cap Cities ABC with Tom Murphy, some of you know, it takes a lot of courage too. Because you're sitting on a lead. You don't want to give up your lead. You want to give up what you have. And you're worried that if you move and you transform, you'll actually lose well, what you, you have. So it takes some, exactly, it takes some real courage. But that's more well, rare it, than one would think. It does because as, when I talk about the old processes being in the way, that's a great, exactly right, David. All the people that have been in the successful divisions of the past want to hang on to their money, want to hang on to their people, Thank want to protect you. the old world. One of the things I did when I got into IBM is I said, all the cash flow now belongs to corporate. So the mainframe people couldn't keep all the ca cash which <laughs> they had, and we reallocated the cash. That's one of the processes that you have to change in turning around a successful company. But don't you need to bring romance to your company? New companies, these disruptors, these new tech companies, employees love it there. They love the sexy. If you're an established American Express, how do you deliver that when everybody cares about the disruptive payment company? Well, I wouldn't call it romance, Stephanie. Love. <laughs> I mean, love. And I wouldn't call it love, but I would call it passion. I mean, you do have to instill people with a sense of purpose, a sense of drive, a sense that we're going to succeed. But most importantly, it's all about focusing outside. Stop thinking about what we do inside. Stop look. Start looking at what the customer wants outside, what the competitor is doing outside. That kind of drive and passion, to me, is goes beyond romance. <laughs>